It has been 17 years since the policy of kicking people out of the military for being gay has been codified under the weirdly named Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy, in which people who neither ask nor tell get kicked out anyway. Uh, in those 17 years, people have fought the policy with a lot of different approaches. People have protested. Uh, people have organized legal defense groups for members of the military who are facing getting kicked out. Folks have made it into a campaign issue and all sorts of different levels of campaigns. People have even elected people to very high office, very, very, very high office, in fact, who have pledged to scrap the policy. I will work with Congress and our military to finally repeal the law that denies gay Americans the right to serve the country they love because of who they are. You spoke with President Obama today. What did you tell him? I basically told him that I was um, currently being uh, discharged under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and I told him the situation for me was urgent and I needed his help. And were you satisfied with the answer you got from the president? He looked me right in the eye and he said, we're going to get this done. For all of those strategies, for all of those promises, the policy is still in place. People are still getting fired today, this week. Now, after patiently twisting in the wind for about two long years, while supposed leadership against this policy limps toward a less than certain result, the highest ranking person in America who is facing getting fired under this policy today made a dramatic and aggressive last ditch move to stop it. To stop it for him and to stop it for everyone. We have that story exclusively tonight on this show. It's next. Here's the way it works now if you are a U.S. Air Force pilot getting fired by your commander-in-chief, Barack Obama, from the military uh, under the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy. Here's how it works. Whether somebody outs you or you out yourself, whether the accusation is true or not, your case goes to a review board. Now, the review board makes a recommendation on whether or not you should be fired. And if you are a particularly high-ranking person being fired from the military by Barack Obama because you are gay, that recommendation will go to, if you're in the Air Force, it will go to the office of the Secretary of the Air Force. At that point, once the recommendation is received, the clock starts ticking. There's a 10-day period, a 10-day window for one of three things to happen. The Secretary of the Air Force can reject the review board recommendation and say, no, actually this person is going to stay in. We are not going to separate them from the military because of this policy. So that's one option. Or the Secretary of the Air Force could accept the recommendation and say, yes, all right, we're going to kick that person out. Or the Secretary of the Air Force could do nothing, in which case the review board decision stands and the person still gets kicked out. That 10-day ticking time bomb has been tick, tick, ticking since at least a week ago now for Lieutenant Colonel Victor Fehrenbach. He and his lawyers learned that that review board recommendation was at the office of the Secretary of the Air Force last Wednesday. We don't know exactly when it was sent there and when the 10-day ticking started, but we know we're well into it. And that means unless drastic action is taken, Lieutenant Colonel Victor Fehrenbach is in his last day or two of his decorated 19-year military career. But like he has told us multiple times on this show, he is fighting back, this time with a legal case to try to block the Air Force from firing him. It's on the front page of the New York Times website right now. Joining us now in his first TV interview since filing his lawsuit is Lieutenant Colonel Victor Fehrenbach, and he's appearing for the first time on this show with a lawyer. His lawyer is Drew Woodmanzi. Uh, gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, Colonel Fehrenbach, let me, let me start with you. I know you received word last Wednesday that your case had been sent to the Secretary of the Air Force with a recommendation. Is it your understanding that that means the recommendation is almost surely that you should be separated from the military? That is our understanding, Rachel, because um, the way the regulation reads, uh, if the Personnel Review Board decided to retain me, then there'd be no reason for my case to be forwarded to the Secretary of the Air Force. The only reason it would be sec forwarded to the Secretary was if the recommendation was for a discharge so that he can either, like you mentioned, um, agree with that action by signing off on it or just letting it happen on its own, or he could do the right thing um, and apply the new enforcement standards and retain me. Uh, which we still hope is the case. And by re applying the new, uh, the new standards, those are, reflect the new restrictive interpretation of Don't Ask, Don't Tell implemented by Secretary Gates. And you believe that that, re that interpretation of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell rule should have excluded you from being fired in this case. Absolutely, Rachel. And when the Secretary announced these new standards in March, uh, he said that they did apply to open cases. And my case is still open uh, to this date. Um, and those 
uh, each one of those factors that he announced applies to my case. And if they don't apply them to my case, then Rachel, they don't, they don't apply to any case. Um, so we hope they do take this opportunity to apply those new enforcement standards and also, as my lawyer will talk about, the WIT standard, which is the law of the land in the Ninth Circuit. We hope they take the opportunity to follow the law and to follow the new enforcement standards that they themselves announced. Well, Drew, let me ask you about that with the WIT standard. I mean, what's, uh, what's going on right now legally is that, I mean, this, Don't Ask, Don't Tell has been in place for 17 years. It, it's expected repeal is coming through the policy process, not through the courts. What is it that makes you think Victor, Colonel Fehrenbach, has a, has a shot at stopping this policy legally? Well, Rachel, part of it has to do with the man's extraordinary record. The man's a war hero. He's been recognized by the Air Force as a war hero. And his service record is so extraordinary that the Air Force has zero evidence in the record that would warrant discharging him under Don't Ask, Don't Tell. The Witt case that Lieutenant Colonel Fehrenbach just referred to was decided in 2008 by the Ninth Circuit. Prior to the Witt case, the burden was on the service member to show that his remaining in the Air Force was not a detriment to morale, good order, and cohesion of the unit. Now, after Witt, the burden is on the Air Force to come forward with evidence and to meet its heavy burden of proof to show that retaining him would in fact harm morale, would actually harm the unit. And the evidence in the record is quite clear that retaining him is great for the unit, it's great for the Air Force. His 2010 officer performance report from February 2010 specifically said that he, quote, raised morale. And when you apply the WIT standard and against that record, it is clear that he should not be discharged under this policy. Drew, what do you think is the likelihood that a federal judge will step in and actually injunct the government from separating Victor from service at this point? They would have to actually stop the government, stop the military from doing something it seems like it is steamrolling toward doing. Rachel, it's always hard to give uh, percentages on these things and it's hard to, to predict with certainty. However, I, I have great faith in the court system in this country. When an objective uh, member of the judiciary takes a look at this with a fresh eye, in light of the WIT standard and in light of this man's extraordinary record of service to this country, I'm highly optimistic that we'll get some relief and at least have a window of opportunity where the status quo is preserved uh, until a full hearing can be held on this with all the evidence that the court wishes to hear so the court can make a determination on a full record. But we're asking the court in the meantime to preserve the status quo to allow him to continue to serve his country until a full hearing can be had. Well, Colonel Fehrenbach, the last time that you were here on the show, you said that you and your legal team had tried to arrange essentially a meeting between you and the review board so that you could make your case, but that request was denied. What would you have wanted to say to them if, you, if, if they had given you that chance to defend yourself and your record? Um, just as Drew alluded to, Rachel, to present my record, but then also, again, to stress to them that certain aspects of the law, as it stood, uh, you know, when I went to my review board, they were not followed by the Air Force, and certainly the new enforcement standards applied, as well as the WIT standard. You know, even before my first discharge board in uh, April of 2009, uh, we actually had a preliminary board hearing, and we asked the Air Force to use the WIT standard in my case, and they refused that request. And in fact, when it came to that one prong of the policy that said, you know, uh, whether I was um, detrimental to good order, discipline, morale, and unit cohesion, the Air Force proved nothing. They brought nothing to that discharge board. All they said was, the law states that as fact, and that presumption that the law is based on is false. So I hope that if we're successful in this injunction, we don't just help my career where I'm able to deploy again and to serve 20 or more years because that's all I wanted to do these last 23 years is to serve my country. We hope this helps other pending cases and other cases that fall under these new enforcement standards. We hope to help everyone out there that, that uh, is, is going through this process right now. Victor, nobody right now says, nobody will argue with the sort of outlook that Don't Ask, Don't Tell is on its way toward being repealed. We know what that process would look like in Washington. We understand that that process is an essentially rolling toward completion. Certainly other things could happen, but everybody believes the policy is on its way toward being repealed. The president personally looked you in the eye and told you that this would get done. Do you think it's conceivable from your t experience in the Air Force, your experience in the military all this time, would it be impossible for the president to just stop implementation of the policy, to hold implementation of the policy until the repeal process can be completed? Couldn't he just do that? 
Um, I've read several reports that said he could use an executive order. He could also use stop loss uh, procedures. But um, what the Service Members Legal Defense Network and uh, other organizations are promoting is that we do need the change to don't ask, don't, don't tell. This law was enacted by Congress, and the only way to get permanent change and a permanent solution is for Congress to repeal this law. But that doesn't mean that we don't need presidential leadership and courage here. We definitely need the president to step forward and to lead this fight uh, to end this discrimination, this unconstitutional law. Lieutenant Colonel Victor Fehrenbach and Attorney Drew Woodmanzi, uh, thank you for joining us this evening. I understand that time is of the essence and things may happen very quickly uh, right now, both in the case and the proceedings with the possible discharge. Please uh, keep us posted on the outcome, you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Absolutely. Rachel. If thank I could you. just add, it's uh, my mother's birthday today, and I just wanted to tell her a happy birthday, and thanks for all the love and support, and I love her, and I wish I could be there to celebrate with her. <laughs> As if people didn't love you enough already, Victor. <laughs> really? You had to put the cherry on top like that? <laughs> thank you, and uh, happy birthday to Victor's mom. Appreciate you guys. Thanks. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> all right, coming up on Countdown, the right-wing freakout over Muslim Americans having the same religious freedom as anyone else in this country. Ah! And coming up on this show, a modest proposal. Uh, it's at least a proposal. That's next.